Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! Name of Vidati. Yo, Michael Dean, what's up? Fuck, shit, piss, god darn hell. Cunt um, licking, raping donkey fucker. Really? Raping? It's really? pretty bad. I mean, raping anybody's bad, but. It is. Yeah. You, you can gotta, bleep it if you want. We're just trying to get them all out, man. Why are we trying to get them all out, Nima? Uh, I, because we might be on actual radio soon. We've no, got, we're going uh, to be. We're going to be going to be i thought then we after we get this one syndication then we have to actually go pitch ourselves to actual radio stations but it's yeah, easier but, for them to take us yeah but can you imagine someone not wanting to take the fiends <laughs> i mean picture yourself as a local radio programmer with, if they're with, john boner fans they might not want to take us since with we're poison a, you know with a saturday to fill between 4 and 6 p.m central every saturday for the rest we're of eternity. Lot, we're a hell of a lot better than delicious dish or or even all things considered <laughs> all dishes considered, all fucking yes. raping donkey dick things considered on NPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Arab anal sex having. There, I, I evened out the Semiticness. You Persian. <laughs> and Persian, that's all. And that's that's yes. coming from this drunken Irishman. All right, man. <laughs> all right. We, we, enough, the the cussing doesn't feel right if it's not organic. I felt like that was forced. So yeah. if we drop if we drop some f bombs or some s missiles, then uh, that'll be fine. But uh, let's do it organically. Let's not try to force it. Well, you know, um, a lot of America. There's you know, there's a lot of Spanish language radio out there. So uh, hey, Nima, tu madre toma mi pingo. Sí, sí. Tu madre chupa mi huevos, güey. <laughs> Um, it's muy mucho, sí, fly. Yeah, slick mine picked. <laughs> Took him a sack. We got to get this all out of us, man. We got, uh, man, we got that guy, that Iranian guy on here, and he said your Iranian curse wasn't even what you thought it was. Remember? Yeah, but I mean, that's how people are with curse words, right? I mean, you ask somebody what fuck is, and they might give you, well, I guess not. I don't know. Curse words are funny like that, though. Because you know, when you ask your parents what the curse word means, of course they're going to soften the blow for you. So when I asked my dad what the curse word means, he's going to tell me something that might not be the actual curse. Yeah, like you know, dog spit instead of like dog rubbing its spit on your throbbing member. Yeah, exactly. Instead of doggy blowjob. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, you know, I um, I have, I'm still getting over the creeping crud. I'm at the tail end of it. I I am almost I could say well and not sick anymore at least physically. Yay. Um, but, you know, this morning I uh, emptied myself, shall we say, for the first time in a week, and it was flotastic, man. In a week? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's how sick crazy. I was. I couldn't do that. That's some, that's some old man shit right there. <laughs> some, <laughs> See, some, that was organic. <laughs> some happy curds, curds and whey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yikes, man. That's sad. That's like... It's like my wife or something, man. If I if I don't Wait, go four you, times, a, <laughs> if I don't go four times a day. I'm I. Something's are, wrong. Are you saying your your wife doesn't have a sex drive? <laughs> oh, that's what you meant by emptied yourself. Okay, we had uh, some crossed wires there. Oh, you thought I pooed? Yeah. No, man. No. No. I've no. been pooing about seventeen times a day. <laughs> okay. And it's okay. been uh, butt Empty soup, yourself? man. Butt I've soup. Nev- Wow, I've never heard that euphemism for for an orgasm. Empty yourself? That's yeah. 
that doesn't sound fun. And it did, it, well, it was it, by that point. It was kind of like, you know, cause I tried yesterday and it was like, everything worked, but it just didn't, um, complete the floodgates did not open <laughs> shall we say it happens to everyone man we're really we're really trying to get all this out before we get on the well, radio apparently, we're apparently. probably never gonna get on the radio now the guy's gonna go tonight and go you know what? he's gonna I, be like I, well i might as well check on him <laughs> this one last time you know who cared well you know ian freeman did give them a high recommendation so, and that's what i i booked them based <laughs> on but you know i probably should listen to them <laughs> oh wow <laughs> And, and of course, that's so pro. That's so pro, man. <laughs> we're doing everything we can't do on radio today. Here, let me feed back. How's that? We're, we're, we're purposefully jinxing. Ah. Is this working back? Did it feed back? Uh, let me hear it again. Did oh, it yeah. Feedback? Did it feed back? I'm getting, I'm getting echo. I'm getting echo. <sighs> bad, bad echo. Oh, and a, a throat clear. Okay. <sighs> wow. Break, break. We're going to take a break. Take a break, break. Break, break, <laughs> break, break, break. Never say break. <laughs> And we're not even taking a break. All right. Yeah. I'm reading about profanity here. Let's see. Um, history of research into swearing. Government sponsored research into. Really? Into, uh, really? Tax money on cussing research? Broadcasting. Wow. In countries where it is illegal to broadcast profanity, programs can be pre recorded or broadcast delay can be used uh -huh. to delete profanity. Yeah. 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 There was okay. a guy that, okay. there was a guy there was a guy that called in Free Talk Live yesterday and like was yell was rapping fuck the police, but he was like nice. censoring I think he had like like a tape delay because it was like the police like he it was it wasn't beeping, but it was it was weird, man. It was like he he, he could self censor so it sounded like someone hitting a, a kill switch. It was weird. Well did did the audio just drop? Because you can just be silent for that syllable. I yeah, mean, but it like it police, cut off the way a know. switch would, man. It was like you know, oh. like a quarter of the syllable, and then it would cut. And Ian was like, "Wow, how'd you do that?" It was great. Oh, wow. Ian, 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 Ian. I like Ian. Yeah. Why don't you just marry Ian? Uh, you, could, you can have a polyamorous, a gay, homosexual cause, relationship. Because Ian's a uh, confirmed bachelor, or is he married? No, Mark's married, <laughs> and Ian likes women about uh, half my age or less. I think. Mm, okay. Well, just buy one of those from Russia, and then you can have him come over, and you can all be one big happy family. Free market, bitches. Yes. Yes. See, I also had to bring prostitution and <clears throat> child pornography into the thing, just so we can we can kill any chances we have at this point. I didn't hear the child pornography. Half my age is <laughs> twenty four years old, man. I am an old oh, yeah. man. Remember? I, I guess you're way older than I. I'm an old man who only empties <laughs> once a week, like your wife. Uh, I, I is that a vegetarian thought... thing? Uh, I don't know. Probably. I thought it was a girl thing. I thought girls just don't go as much as guys. They just sneak off and do it. They don't want you to know. You, you, you think she's lying to me? <laughs> See, it, it doesn't work that way because my office is literally an adjunct of the bathroom. So <laughs> she comes in and says, I need a moment alone. And so I can so, track um, that shit. So we have a show to do. And, um, oh, yeah, that whole thing. I think we should do it. Uh, okay. Well, let me send you some stuff to read here. Read this. Uh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> do we want to talk about the, the thing that happened, the, uh, the comment we got from John Boehner's office? Yeah, we can start off with that, although I think it's pronounced Boner. No. Okay. <laughs> That's how I pronounce it. Man, why is, I, I, why is Pigeon in this endless loop? Do you have pigeon it does, on? It, it, yeah, it does that sometimes. I have to click private too, I think. Click private. I did. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, yeah, so here, yeah. I'm going to send it again. I there. was already on that I was already on that page, but All right. okay, that works well. Too. So, uh, I got this, we got this comment that reputed to be from John Boehner. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, it's some freedom fiend doing, uh, doing. Uh, uh, jokey joke. Yeah, yeah. joke. You know, being funny. Sexual being funny. Like, like joke, fiends do. Yeah. Yeah. And then I noticed that the IP address block was uh US House of Representatives and looked it up and it turns out that this IP address and a few around it have been used uh to edit Wikipedia favorably for various uh congressmen of over course. the past few years. So <laughs> you know, I believe it actually came from that. I wrote a blog post about it. It got picked up by uh Claire Wolf and David Kadria and uh, a few other people. And nice. it, it made it around the, the interwebs. And, and then I got this weird, like, encrypted email from some 
anonymous individual who was like implying that it might have been uh, someone who's really smart at spoofing things uh, could have done it, you know. And but and yeah. then they and then someone else was like, well, you know, you say you're hanging out with and interviewing all these people from anonymous and this place and that place and like, of course they could do that. I'm like, well. Maybe, but it's interesting that they picked an IP that, you know, has actually been used or maybe the, but Wikipedia has apparently confirmed that those were actually from there. So, but maybe, maybe the person who pointed it out was the person who actually did the prank. Maybe. Because the thing that leads me to believe it's, it's likely a prank or could be a prank is if it was some staffer in the house of representatives, why would they use John Boehner's name? Like, why would they be Jay Boehner? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. 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 John Unless boner. they're just like boner, yeah. See, it sounds so much better when you say boner. Yeah, but uh, it it sparks some nice discussion on the comment section in the Freedom Fiends blog, which you should go read all the time. Oh, you should read some of it right now. You should read that. <laughs> I will. I, I will kidding. give you a awesome. tasty teaser. All right, uh, upset patriot Jesus conservative writes. <laughs> At, you people what's his, want wait, what's, his e- what's his email address? Oh, I'm just looking at the blog. Oh, I didn't see his email. His, address, his email address right. is. Uh, um, Jesus hates the freedom fiends at everlastingjoy.com. dot <laughs> um, Whatever. Jesus loves us. Yeah. Jesus when loves him. The when him and the twelfth Imam come back to Earth to save it, they'll they'll put the freedom fiends on a pedestal. You know, there's an Iggy and the Stooges <laughs> record called uh, Bootleg called G- Jesus loves the Stooges. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. But hey, he might. I don't know. He's he's a pretty dope guy. But uh, here's what upset patriot Jesus conservative wrote. You people want anarchy. Blood in the streets. We need the government to protect us from freaks like the freedom fiends. I don't mind paying for essential services like research into bat migratory patterns or restricting candy cigarettes. It's people like you who want to destroy nature and our children. What do you think will happen when the police stop working? I'll tell you. It'll be cannibalism and debauchery, <laughs> man on man, pig on women, and squirrel on worm will be a common sight. <laughs> Mass suicide drug overdose by huffing paper bags full of permanent markers because no one is rich enough to afford real drugs will be commonplace. Be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Although the appropriate wow. fiend answer would have been paper bags full of jankum. But yeah, yeah. you get an A, a solid A. We could have gave you the plus for the jankum. And the squirrel paper on worm sex. <laughs> squirrel man. on worm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Maybe it is. Hey, put us on the radio. So we, for that. Put us on the radio so we can talk about squirrel on worm marriage. S- squirrel on worm drug induced by jankum. I mean, if a man time. can marry a man, you know, where's it end? A squirrel marrying a worm? <laughs> Yes, a tree marrying a, a cage. A See, cage. We, we even go beyond animals. Yeah, and hey, an objects can marry. I'm other. not the one that has a big S and M cage in my living room that you used. Uh, <laughs> that you put yourself in for a video. You just happen to have a cage there. It really worked in the video, right? That's you. That's what I call using the space. Yeah. Yeah. You did. Yeah. You know, my my thing has always been like, why leave your property to make a movie? I mean, we barely left my property to make <laughs> guns and weed. I mean, yeah, we went to 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 Colorado. We had the nice road trip to the to Pharmaceuticals. You the slept through dispenser. it. It wasn't nice for me and DJ. We were like cr- cringing through traffic in both directions while you were. Uh, Do you guys not enjoy traveling by road? It is so nice. I guess I guess I don't know. We re- I waffle back and forth. I hate yeah. I hate roads like in Austin, but I like a nice stretch roads. in Wyoming. Well, and we really liked it until you get to the last hour, which is the last ten miles into Denver. In Denver, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, driving it's like in Denver sucks. You you kind of remember that you're coming from Wyoming, where there's right. no people to get in your way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess that's that's the distinction. Is I love those long stretches of Wyoming roads where you literally don't see another car for a hundred miles. Mm-hmm. That's 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 a good feeling. Wide open spaces. Whereas, but. you know, in Denver, in Austin, you see a cop every two, four times a block. Yeah, yeah. More cops than people sometimes I see when I'm downtown at night. On a slow night for 6th Street, there's always, like, more cops than people. It's sad. Sad yeah. and despicable. Yeah. And then there's then there's those people who act like the government and come up and wash your windshield and make it dirtier and charge you money. <laughs> <laughs> that was Expect a really good analogy, them. man. I really like that. Well, I guess, though, that they don't get violent. So even even those guys aren't as bad as the government because if you refuse to pay, you just drive off, right? What are they going to do? They're going to chase you on foot? Uh, no, they can't. They get agitated sometimes, so though. Yeah, they, they do. They look but, like but they're they have, going to get violent. Right, but they've got I'm no sure power to back have. it up. I'm sure that, you know, 
one of them has taken a lead pipe to someone's car before, back tail light or something. Yeah, but in the rock paper scissors realm, car beats lead <clears throat> pipe. You know, <laughs> they'd be the government if if they could produce a drone to fly at you when you drove off to uh, shoot a Hellfire missile at you for you not paying me, them. You sent me a uh, somebody selling a drone toy on oh, Amazon, yeah. and there were some <laughs> some really great comments on that. Maybe we should read some of those. Yeah, there sure were. I was proud of uh, Amazonians, or I guess Amazon Amazon, sh- Amazon shoppers for doing that. Yep. Amazonians are what uh, I think the company calls its employees. I won't go into any more detail than How that. How would you know such a thing? I don't know. I don't. I'm Here, just, I just sent just you the con- link. If just you wanna, conjecture. You want to read a couple of those fucking radio-friendly, gosh darn, pig-raping uh, comments there on Amazon? God damn it. I think you're right. All right. Cool. <laughs> what are some of the cusses that, that Terrence and Philip use? Barbara Streisand. <laughs> they do donkey raping shit eater, which mine was. I was but trying they, to change it on the words. Tag, so it wasn't copyright like, infringement. They tag like Barbara Streisand at the end of it or something. Oh yeah. Oh no, that's Cartman's when he he summons up the the power to get the V chip to overload so <laughs> yeah, much that he yeah. can shoot like an electrical bolt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like it's like Barbara Streisand tampon popsicle or something. You like know, that. on uh, on Archer, you know the the gay agent Ray. Uh-huh. Blonde guy with mustache. Um, he has two. He carries two 1911s, and uh, I caught this really quickly. I free, froze frame on it. They're they're engraved. They have names. They're um, Barbara and Liza. <laughs> Who's oh Liza Minnelli? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. All right, so. There is a drone toy. Uh, you could probably search it on Amazon. Maybe we could put the link. We could put I will an Amazon put the link. link. I will. Yeah. In case you want to buy buy a drone to support fiends. That would be funny. <laughs> all right. There you go. So, uh, um, our hanky, quote unquote, sick of it all, of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, reviewed the drone toy. He says, I bought this for my kids, and one wasn't enough. They wanted 30000 so they could pretend that they were flying over the U.S., blowing up evil gun owners and patriots all over the country. Now they can spy on me and my wife when we are out in the garden. They were disappointed <laughs> when they could not have toy figures of children and innocent bystanders cut in half were not included. <laughs> Wow. Wow, man. So not realistic enough because there's not enough mutilated body parts to spread around when you're using these drone toys. There should be like a, you know, uh, an add-on pack of children's limbs. (laughs) Of body parts. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Brian Kunkelmoller. I guess that's right. I don't know. He gave it only one star, though. He said the drone toy is not realistic. He says the toy doesn't come with plastic bombs or plastic civilian targets. It also doesn't have an American flag painted on it. I'm glad it's approved for three-year-olds so my kids can play with it, but they didn't really understand what the darn thing was. I had to paint some Lego men like Arabs and make some little bombs out of firecrackers for them to use now. I think they're starting to get it, but it would be nice if these things were already included so they can figure out what it is and how to kill insurgents on their own <laughs> man yeah. you know the, it, the the really sad thing i don't even know if this is worth saying but you know it's so obvious but for those new listeners out there in fucking radio land uh the stuff we're talking about is real and it's what the government does and if a citizen even implied doing things like this they would be arrested hopefully <sighs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if they that, really that were, the do, thing. If they we're, were doing we're, things like this, if they're doing things like this, you know, just right. randomly killing, double tap war crime, kill the the people who come to help the people after you kill the people, kind of things. I mean, that's yeah. that's like the worst, see, you know, law and order special victims unit ever. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. I mean, I'm laughing and making light here at the concept of selling the toy, but uh, you know, it's almost like laughing to keep from puking with disgust because it it really is such a horrible thing that goes on in the world. And you know, there are, are vast portions of American citizens or I guess just people out there in the middle part of North America that don't even know that this kind of stuff happens. They just don't even Or they're know. they're in favor of it. They're like, "Well, that's what those people get for being Muslim and living in those countries." Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what those little five-year-olds get for being born in the wrong place. Which is, you know, what? Doesn't Al-Qaeda have like 400 members or something like that? They think it used to. Like, I but don't now, even think every it, time it, they it drone somebody, now. every time they, oh, it has less now? 
Well, in what is the original, I guess, Al Qaeda of actual experienced hardened terrorists? I guess that's what the CIA thinks. There's less yeah. than 100 in Afghanistan. I guess is it? Yeah, because I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how they count who's actually. A they've droned 300 of them, and every time they drone them, they've killed you know 50 other people and created more non Al Qaeda terrorists in the process. Yeah, yeah. I mean. The thing is, just always bring these things back and try to imagine it from the other point of view. I mean, I think that's the corollary for looking yeah, at the unseen yeah. in an economic sense, is try to look at things through the victim or, or the people on the other end, the receiving end. Yeah, if Cuba, of, of, you know, actions. okay, here, here's a question for any patriot gun owners out there who've uh, promised to, you know, defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. Uh, if Cuba sent soldiers into your neighborhood and was blowing up your neighbors you know blew blew up the ch your church to kill uh to kill one guy in your church and you were home with the flu that day and you saw those same cuban soldiers walking down your street you'd shoot them absolutely yeah. i mean you'd you'd be right to do so yeah and and regardless of whether you'd be right or not uh you know you might feel like you really wanted to i mean that, that seems to me like like human nature to defend where you live from outside invading forces that are blowing things up. Uh, I mean, that seems like 101, right? And that's yeah. why yeah. that's why imperial powers can never really win an insurgency. Uh, settlers, you know, uh, settler colonies can. Like America was a settler colony that ended up conquering all of this part of North America. But the only way they were able to do that was through genocide. So if you're going to stay there and live there, you have to kill all the natives. But, uh, you know, the British Empire collapsed. Uh, India gained its own freedom because, you know, Britain wasn't sending British people there to conquer the whole subcontinent. So, I mean, all, all that happens is a bunch of people get killed and the empire doesn't really get what it wants. And the people who live in the place that's being drone bombed or whatever, obviously they don't want that to happen to them. So it seems like a lose-lose. The only person that could possibly win would be the people that manufacture the weapons that go boom. You know what? Uh, you said it was like, you know, you're explaining why we're laughing. Do you know what, you know what laughter is for? Do you know why laughter exists? Do you know what all humor is based on deep down? Um, tell me. Um, avoiding fear of death. That is uh, oh. what a lot of researchers and psychiatrists believe, and it sounds right to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds right to me. I mean, <laughs> you think about uh, comedians, right? I mean, what, what are they always trying to get you to laugh at is their horrible misfortune and horrible things that, that are happening in yeah. their own lives and how shitty their lives are. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, and how their wives only screw them about as often as women poo. <laughs> and on that note, we're gonna go sell some things here on radio. Ah, uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system. On a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from mother's ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system. On a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. 
Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. Okay. Rolling. So, um, last night I was uh, channel flipping with my wife and uh, right after we ate dinner, you know, there's nothing on and... Uh, what's his name pierce morgan was on i was like i put him on and she goes oh no no <laughs> and i was like come on and for some reason i left it on and then like five seconds later he introduced alex jones and said this is the guy that wants to deport me yeah and uh <laughs> see if you yeah. if you would have had facebook you would have known ahead of time and known well, to expect alex jones on the pierce morgan show i don't what's happening on facebook nima um well you're not there so everything happens on facebook Anytime something happens in the world, <laughs> the CIA on happens phone. on Facebook. Yeah, you know it's it's funny because I was like, ah, I'm finally free from government intrusion. I'm off Facebook, and then like John Boehner insults us on, <laughs> on our site, <laughs> not from Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Alex Jones he, was lively. He was lively. He was like animated, man. Like oh, I don't he have was Alex Jones. Having. He was like, he was Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, he was Alex Jones. Uh, but he was more so than normal. And when I first was watching it, you know, because I had I'd heard I watched it after the fact. I watched it t- today after I got back from the airport. And, um, you know, I'd already seen all the comments on Facebook about how he was being a blowhard and discrediting the movement. And he calls himself a libertarian. So this is a blow to the liberty movement. It makes us all seem like crazies and makes gun lovers seem like crazies. Um, you know, he didn't say anything that I disagreed with. I mean, nope. other than like his constitution humping and we'll yeah. get back to the Republic, which I'm not sure, yeah. but, um, DJ and I had dis- a disagreement about it and she-, she was like, he should calm down and let the guy speak, you know, let Pierce Morgan speak. He didn't let him speak. Um, and he's dis- she said he was discrediting gun owners and Liberty people. And I disagreed. I was like, the way I was looking at it was like, that that adi- and that was a very common attitude on the Twitter sphere, which is where I'm active now. After the show, immediately uh, it was, just, it was because a- the cops don't follow that; they only follow <laughs> Facebook. So you're safe on Twitter, Michael. No, it's just less annoying than <laughs> Facebook. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, it was a really common response. DJ had it, and a lot of people on the Twitter sphere were like, "Man, he was he he discred- he could have done so well with that, but he discredited it." discredited gun owners and my reaction was like that's that's kind of like watching um a professional wrestling match and saying that guy's pink tights make him look gay he shouldn't be wearing pink tights you know it's (laughs) there's nobody who's a regular watcher of that show that would have been convinced regardless of how calm he was and the proof of it was a couple weeks ago, uh, Pierce Morgan had Larry Pratt of the Gun Owners of America on, who was completely cogent and had a discussion rather than just ranting, right? And just slayed Pierce Morgan with logic. And nobody, what, what did he get for it? Because nothing. in that one, P- Pierce was the one who was going insane, yeah, yeah. and yeah. being Alex Jones esque and yelling and calling him names. Although Alex Jones didn't call Pierce names, but he did. Uh, he mocked. He did him. challenge him to it. He challenged him to a duel. Yeah, and he mocked his British accent with a really bad English accent. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but, uh, well, he, my he, chal- he challenged him to box, which I thought. I don't know about that. That that kind of seems like it's it yeah. gives, gives well, us a bad name. Did you happen you didn't you didn't see it on TV, so you didn't see the guest right after the commercial, after Alex Jones was gone. No. Uh, he had Alan Dershowitz on, who I think defended OJ, didn't he, or somebody. He's some, you know, professional mm-hmm. whoring lawyer who's been around for mm-hmm. decades. Um and they basically I mean, they were like you know, it's people like Alex Jones who who make me afraid of gun owners. I mean, you know, mm. if we were if I if you'd had that discussion Pierce 
in his home, in Alex Jones's home, I would be afraid that he'd pick up one of those 50 weapons and use it on you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they agreed. And it was basically like the spin, the really effed up, sp- fucked up spin right after the thing. I mean, they just made yeah. Alex Jones like look criminal, violent, insane. You know, I actually thought that, um, I think that's, that's why they picked him. It's the Pierce yeah. Morgan show. Oh, they yeah. didn't, they didn't pick Lou Rockwell. They didn't pick somebody who's calm, but well stated. Yeah. They, they picked, they didn't Alex pick Jones. the fiends who would have just said, well, fuck you. <laughs> you know, here's, here's how I felt. Cause when I first saw it, the first three minutes or so, um, I was like, okay, good job, Alex. You know, you're not taking shit. You're coming out. You're just stating statistics and using them to your advantage. Uh, and then he sort of built to this crescendo of of uh you know he had sort of this climax and it was it was nice it was like wow it's good to see he emptied he, he emptied he, he emptied himself too early and then there was he like emptied all over all yes, over the studio all over and Pierce. all over Pierce I, yeah and then there was like 5 6 minutes left and he didn't have anywhere to go from there it's like it's like when you're on a in theater and on a on a stage you can't you can't hit those notes at the beginning you got to have somewhere to go later and later Alex Jones just said the same things over and over again and kept yelling and then he had to go to some fake british accent so i, I don't know maybe it was just a timing thing coupled with you know i uh, think Pierce missed missed an ex- i i think Pierce missed an opportunity to make Alex Jones look even crazier than he did. Um, Cause Alex Jones was, was going on and on and on about, you know, guns are not for duck hunting. They are for defending against tyrannical government. Mm-hmm. I, re- if I were Pierce Morgan, I would have jumped in there and said, so are you planning on shooting people from the government? Mm-hmm. He, he missed an opportunity by saying, you know, I would have liked yeah. to have heard Alex well, Jones's amp to answer that. Pierce couldn't really get a word in edgewise, though, could he? <laughs> oh, he got a few in. He he could have gotten yeah. that in. All, all all he seemed to do with his few words edgewise, though, was to try to ask questions that I don't know. It didn't well, seem like it really. Yeah, it, 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 he was. He, he kept he, he, he kept was, asking what what kind of weapon was used at this massacre. Yeah, what kind kept, of weapon was used at this other he massacre? Kept dragging this smelly red herring across the path of where Alex Jones was <laughs> was going into three different, four <laughs> different, did. five different dimensions at once. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think, and the, DJ's complaint was, well, he's not having a debate with him. He should have a debate with him. Pierce Morgan wants to have a debate with him, and I'm like. That is not the issue here. There's no debate to be had. It's you know? it's Piers Morgan. You're not going to yeah, have a debate, yeah. a real debate on the Piers Morgan yeah. show. I mean, uh, and I and I saw the the Gun Owners of America, Larry Pratt, one about three weeks ago, where they did have a debate, and DJ hadn't seen that, so I had like some show prep for dealing with this yeah. Im- amazing, beautiful monstrosity of Alex Jones yelling and being yeah. Alex Jones and spewing on national TV. I mean, I'm all for when that happens. You know, it's like Ron Paul ran for president so he could get 20 minutes of prime time on two news channels at once. You know, that's basically mm-hmm. what came of it. And yeah. uh Alex Jones got on there and just spewed, you know, and he went on the view and spewed. I mean, he was supposed to be on there talking about some actor who was it? Uh the guy who's winning Winning. Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Charlie Sheen. But, yeah. you know, he ended up talking about 9-11 and black helicopters and, you know, CIA has put uh, listening devices in our fillings or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess the thing is, don't stoop to that level. I mean, I feel like maybe the liberty movement or the pro-gun movement would have been better served. I mean, I, I enjoyed the Larry Pratt thing. And, and after watching the Larry Pratt thing, I just came away thinking that Larry Pratt's a smart guy, knows what he's talking about, and Piers Morgan is a douche. Whereas watching the Alex Jones versus uh, Piers Morgan, I just kind of thought they were both kind of douches. I don't know, man. I still go back to like, um, there's nobody who watches that kind of bread and circus who's going to be convinced, you know? I mean, do you think do you think that anybody watched Larry Pratt and went, "Oh, you know, I mean, I know we've been talking about having this this open national discussion about guns, which is our code word for we're going to kill you to take them away and you're going to either be killed or give them to us." Not on uh, TV, but who cares about TV anymore? We watched it on YouTube, and we, we were able to pass it. The people in the Liberty Mission were able to pass it amongst themselves. The people in Liberty and Mission be- already have the opinion. They already know the truth. They already know what's right. I, I know, but it's important to hone uh, what we talk about and how we 
pitch it and how we and and how we think about it and get new ways of saying it and new ways of looking at it and uh i guess sometimes it is important to reaffirm your own biases in some ways by seeing that all they have on their side is yelling and name calling and and appeals to emotional oh we're so scared of these scary black rifles Alex Jones didn't really um, yell and name call. He just was Alex Jones as if he mm. were on the Alex Jones show and ignored yeah. the fact that there was someone trying to ask a question. I mean, I just, I just think that any critique of that that but, should have been done he, differently. He said he he called. He said there would be a revolution if there's gun control. There which, will be. Yeah, yeah. But he be, also he, he it, also challenged. He challenged Pierce to a boxing match, and I, 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 it just seemed like he was getting too heated. Like it seemed like he felt he had something to prove. Like, like it, it was almost like a Chihuahua complex thing. Like he was barking really, really loudly at at the the other bigger, scarier dog. It it didn't didn't come off well to me in that regard. Uh, I think you haven't been reading much on the internet because you know it is uh. The beginning of January, so the the beginning of the year's NEMA vacations has begun already. The the vacation season for NEMA. Well, what what, what am I? Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me what I'm missing. Um, I think you need. I think we need to read some of it. I think you need to. Uh, let me send you something right here. We can read out loud from Claire Wolf, basically saying it times up. Um, I'm going to send you some stuff from Sipsy Street Irregulars, where they're basically like, if you come for our guns, we are going to kill you. Uh, it's <laughs> America has sold more scary black rifles in the past month than in any other month in history. Um, mm -hmm. the government is talking about taking them away and making them a felony to own. People do not buy things that costs cost many hundreds or a few thousand dollars to have them taken away. So right. there are millions of Americans planning on becoming felons. That's what's going right. on. I, I yeah. don't think you're realizing no, that. I don't no, think I've you're realized, realizing. I've, and and there are many. That. And there are many who are basically saying, if you make it to the point where you know it's twenty years in prison, like being a murderer for having this little piece of plastic on my rifle, I'm probably just going to use it and kill people. There are people saying that. There are there are thousands of people basically saying that. Okay. I'm not so saying it, that. It, it, I'm not so saying it, that. But there if, are people saying that. If it's supposed that. to be this big, uh, huge conflict, then how does it help to go on to national television and give them fuel? Like you said, after the Alex Jones thing, uh, the spin was look at this crazy group of people. Of uh, Look at this crazy group of Americans that have 50 guns in their house and are the ones that are going to gun shows and spending three grand on AR-15s. It's not useful to give them that fuel if they're, if they're the you, enemy you, and they really are, are trying something. You are making an invalid assumption, which is that the people trying to pass these laws are going to react to anything anyone does and do otherwise. You, you're you are ignoring the fact that whatever uh, is introduced in Congress next week or next month about outlawing this or that isn't something that was written in response to these shootings in Colorado and Connecticut. Mm. It's something that's been sitting in a drawer for 15 years waiting yeah. for the time to pull well it out. Exactly. But it sits in the drawer for years and it waits for the time. The way they know it's time is when enough people uh, buy the BS and whether they do that through scaring them and and pointing to a long chain of these massacres um, or, or pointing to Alex Jones. I mean, that all helps them to pull it out of the drawer and put it into place. I think I mean, whatever what, happens. Otherwise, otherwise, why is it in the drawer, Michael? Otherwise, why didn't they do it 10 years ago? I guess they did do it 10 you're, years ago, though, didn't you're, they? You're basically saying Alex Jones should have delayed the inevitable by not being Alex Jones. <laughs> that's what you're saying. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying he could have done that a lot better. And You know, the Freedom Fiends have been accused of a lot of the same things you're saying. A lot of people who don't like us uh, mm -hmm. do not like Macho Libertarian Flash and tell us we'd get more flies with honey than vinegar, whatever. Um, that's a common complaint about us, that we yeah. shouldn't cuss, um, that we should 
interview this kind of person or that kind of person, you know, kind of people that make me go, I don't want to do that. That sounds like school, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. You are, and I'm not picking on you. You just happen to have, I'm, I'm picking on everyone that I saw complaining about this, which was hundreds of people that I saw, which means there were, you know, hundreds of thousands of people probably. Um, you are basically saying that zebra shouldn't have stripes. When you say <laughs> Alex, Alex Jones, Jones, you're saying Alex right. Jones should okay. have not been himself. So no, e- I, either- I don't want to say that. Okay, you're right. You're right. Alex Jones is just being Alex Jones, and that's great. But uh, and the, should the Freedom Fiends cuss and talk about shooting Jankum and banging tranny hookers? Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, we should. No, we shouldn't because we are <laughs> turning off people who would be offended by that, and it is our mm-hmm. job, and we have a responsibility to the Liberty Mission. To not turn off potential people to liberty, Nima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess the thing is, whenever you see, I think it's, it's a natural instinct, especially people who are content producers or bloggers or or have things to say. It's it's your natural in- instinct to put yourself. in <laughs> I the drink shoes. straight out the eight bottle. Do I look like a motherfucking role model? <laughs> You know, it's it's my instinct to put myself in Alex's shoes and and think about how I would have done it different. Well, I guess he's that's, he's that's right down the Monday street from you, man. I think you should go yeah. stalk him and hang out in his bushes. Why? So he could shoot me with one of his fifty guns? <laughs> <laughs> no, <clears throat> I'm not going to do that. A, I'm not creepy, and I don't. I'm not on nuts like that. Like, I don't know. You're um, not on nuts. Yeah, squirrels. On nuts. Help keep squirrels off nuts. <laughs> That's what you're saying with Alex Jones. Alex Jones shouldn't be Alex Jones. We need to spend tax money to keep squirrels off nuts, man. <laughs> or at least have a voluntary anarchist campaign to get nuts out of the hands of squirrels. Okay. Okay. Do you want squirrel right. on worm marriage? Is that what you're trying to I get do. here? You yeah, really do, yeah. And I and I want squirrel on uh worm gangbang gangbang porn, lots of it. Radio, we're going to be on radio. Yes. <laughs> I I love how like the show where we're announcing that we're going to be on radio might be the one that gets us killed from ever being on radio. Yeah, or killed might get us killed, man. Alex Jones is going to send that's what his makes it so fun. That's what Alex makes it Jones so fun. will send his worm squirrels over with their fifty guns. <laughs> nice, nice. I like yeah. Alex Jones, and I love that he exists. I don't listen to him. He scares the hell out of me. But uh, I really, really liked seeing him do his professional wrestling uh, verbal judo on uh, yeah. on Pierce Morgan. Yeah. 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 I guess I, guess I did enjoy parts of it, and I do like things about Alex Jones. Um, I don't know. I, I, I still think that he gave – gun grabbers more fuel than we needed to give them and if if the segment was half as long as it was i probably wouldn't have said that i i and and i guess that's not his decision that was the producer's decision hey keep rolling this is good shit um keep keep antagonizing him pierce you know that kind of thing keep poking alex um but you know i I was watching this law and order last night and there was this one with this like radical revolutionary violent guy and um He's he's he and this woman are out doing these violent revolutionary acts, and they finally get caught and see the error of their ways and go to prison. But um, uh, at one point, the woman who's with the older man um, walks in on the older man, the kind of leader of the revolution, in bed mm-hmm. with another woman, and gets mm-hmm. really upset. And you know the the other woman leaves, and and his explanation is like. Why are we doing this? We're out doing these revolutionary acts because we want to be free. And this is what free people do. You know, I would say Alex Jones is doing what free people do is just fucking ranting anywhere he can. And it doesn't have to be calm, man. I'm not saying it has to be calm. Okay. And you're right about that. You're right. You're right about it. He's doing what free people do. I guess what I'm saying is the fiends should have a million listeners like Alex Jones has. Yeah. (laughs) And then, and then what, you know. Are we gonna not fucking cuss? I guess that's why we're fucking getting all this well, shit out of today. I guess. I guess the other thing I, I I don't like about Alex Jones is 
he doesn't seem to have that principled, non-aggression principle foundation. You know, he's kind of a minarchist. He's kind of a constitution humper. He's he's saying he's saying he wants Piers Morgan deported for the Second Amendment. You know, he wants the government to forcibly remove somebody for disobeying something that the government wrote on a piece of paper. I mean, yeah. it, it's just it's minarchist to the core. Uh, I mean, I guess not to the core, but it's it's just not. It's not. Yeah, like I said, that was the only thing I disagreed with him about was his republic, you know, licking. Right, right. I mean, I I like the the better angle of, well, Pierce, you're just saying that people you like should have guns, and that's not fair. You You know what, though? We would sound crazier than him talking calmly on national TV saying what we're saying. Coming from from anarchy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, but um, maybe it'd be so crazy that that it would be salient to people and they wouldn't just dismiss us offhand as, you know, conservatives or or gun lovers or NRA Well, yeah, because I think that there are liberals who, um, you know, are are liberals by default like I was and like you were who, as soon as they hear anarchy, they recognize it as on a cellular level as, wait, that's what I am. Why am Mm -hmm. I watching Pierce Morgan? You know? Right. Well, one of the number one things that people say led them to Ron Paul was seeing his debate in 2008 when uh, when he didn't back down from Rudy Giuliani, when he was saying that the reason 9-11 happened was blowback for CIA and American foreign policy in the Middle East. And Giuliani looked at him like, you can't say that. You can't blame America. And Ron Paul's like, no, I'm not blaming America. I'm blaming the CIA. And the CIA even says so. It's called blowback. And he didn't yeah, back down. Yeah. And he told the truth. And people were like, wow, I've never heard anybody on real TV say that before. Yeah. And, you know, what leads a lot of people to the Freedom Fiends is they listen to Ron Paul, then they discover Alex Jones, and then yeah. they go, wait, <laughs> this what's this Republic stuff? And then they find the Fiends. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. And soon uh, we'll be on fucking radio. <laughs> right yes. after Alex Jones. Yes, yes. Although uh, we do kind of just discover or, or libertarians discover themselves as libertarians through us sometimes. I'd like to give a shout out to some some family friends and family members of mine in uh, in Salt Lake City. Uh, one of them said, who's, who's now a long time Central listener, scrutinizer said, guy is pulling out a pen. Okay, wait. All right, he, go ahead. He, spell no, that, please. Gonna, spell I'm that. Keep, nope, Cedric with a C shit. or an S. Okay, wait. Nope, nope. That's not even who I'm talking about. This is completely different. This is a grown-ass man. Uh, and he, he said, you know, I... I I always thought I was just crazy, like I had all these thoughts and opinions that nobody else I ever knew about in the world had, and then I heard Freedom Fiends, and I'm like, yes, that's the shit I'm talking about, that's what I'm saying, and showed his friend, showed his wife, and she shows people. I know it's not work. your dad. Oh, definitely not my dad, no, no. <laughs> he, still, he still thinks, he, um, we, had, we had our um, requisite debate that we always seem to have when <laughs> we visit, um, and at this point... Um, you know, I was just, I don't know, I guess objectively, or at least I guess subjectively, but in my mind, beating him on every point, like I had an answer for every objection, I had uh, examples of everything he, of, of every time I objected to what he was saying, and uh, he, all he could come up with was, oh yeah, I, I mean, I guess you're right about that, nothing you're saying is untrue, but but you get rid of cops and, and people will just start killing each other. And just that that whole thing of, you know, well, I just really fear the lack of a state. I don't um, kill anybody. And uh, the last time I saw a cop was one went by my block four times last night. And I don't know why. And I literally I don't think I've seen a cop in a month other than that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so important to point out, too, that cops are such a relatively new thing. Like, what, 100 50 years or something like that modern yeah, police yeah did did people kill each other all the time back then i mean i don't know no. more than now i don't think so though no but let's go sell some things all right let's do it what does freedom mean tune in to lrn.fm to find out lrn.fm is the liberty radio network a collection of live talk radio and podcasts all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective lrn.fm show hosts aren't left right or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you like tranny hookers and shooting crocodile, tune in to FreedomFiends.com. Nima, the government is uh, taking a page from The Simpsons to try to solve the debt. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Um... There's, of course, a Simpsons episode where I think it's supposed to be like uh, FDR. No, Harry Truman uh, prints up a trillion-dollar bill to pay the Europeans for 
post-war reconstruction and for, uh, for th- fighting so for fighting so poorly and surrendering <laughs> so quickly <laughs> And Mr. To make Burns, good on this drunken boast, the United States <laughs> Treasury authorized the one-time tr- printing of a trillion-dollar bill, and they they trusted it with America's richest and therefore most trustworthy citizen, <laughs> C. Montgomery Burns. <laughs> yes, yes, and of course, uh, it mysteriously disappears. Um, you he know, hands the FBI- it to Castro. <laughs> they have a street named after you in San Francisco. It's full yeah. of what? <laughs> Nice, nice. Wow, you know your Simpsons well, dude. Did you look that up? Yeah, it's like I can't remember what I, in your brain. I, I can't remember what I had for breakfast, but I could probably do that whole episode word for word, and I haven't seen it in eight years. Nice, nice. <laughs> but uh, in this a similar vein, uh, there's a Telegraph article in uh, you know the UK paper, the Telegraph. Talk about um, out of style. They're called the Telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. talk- <laughs> you're not obsolete or outdated at all. The Telegraph, Smithers. Look it up in the 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 Radio Trolla Weekly. <laughs> the headline here is U.S. seriously considering one trillion dollar coin to pay off debt. <laughs> Says the U.K. horse and buggy daily fish wrap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, apparently it started out as kind of a joke, uh, but now that everybody's kind of like, well, what the hell do we do about everything? You know, a six trillion dollar debt limit, and the fact that there's a, a debt ceiling, so Congress has to approve the raising of the debt ceiling, which they all are. What always people don't do, know so. too is that Congress started out as a joke, and then people started to take it seriously. <laughs> Yeah, it was like yes. a drunken you- bet between you know Franklin and one of his hookers, wasn't it? Okay, look, we'll have all these so. dudes, yeah. and then we'll let them take turns ruling everybody, and we'll call it <laughs> democracy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we can all steal as much as we want. It's in the Constitution. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I think that's how it started, and we just uh, <laughs> got out of hand from there. So maybe this will too, but but I doubt it because Congress is going to just you know give the president what he wants anyway. It's just funny that mm. this this is how uh, work. Mmm, pork. Yeah, yummy. Pork. pork. It's delicious. Um, and this is how the the debate has devolved into is is them threatening to well, if Congress, if you won't give me all the money I want anyway, I'll I can just print a trillion dollar coin. Like it just is so ridiculously childish. And and yeah, people say yeah, it's kind of gimmicky, but there are people saying hey, we could really do this. You know, if you're gonna threaten default on the debt, then we can threaten to use the <laughs> coin loophole. We'll just mail it to China. Here's your. <laughs> we'll mail eight of them to China. Here you yeah. go. Yeah. Well, I, I think how they they say it would work is the treasury would print the coin, or you don't print a coin. What do you do? You mint a coin, um, and they would have to mint it from platinum because um, because if you assign a if you make it out of platinum, you can assign any value to it because platinum is reserved for commemorative coins. <laughs> so the value becomes arbitrary. So the treasury would, would mint it out of platinum, assign it a trillion dollars, and give it to the Federal Reserve. No, they'll send Ben the Bernanke, debt. America's richest and therefore most respectable citizen, trustworthy citizen, to bring it to China. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the silly thing too, because it's not like the Federal Reserve won't do exactly what they want anyway, and vice versa. So, well, there's all this stuff it's happening just a, now. Just like a, the, just a funny you know, thought that this the, is something that people are talking about, right? The Democrats want to remove. There's some Democrats seriously considering. We talked about before about removing term limits for the president. They want to remove the debt limit, and they want to take away the guns. So basically, they want to have president for life, Obama, with an unlimited checkbook and all the guns. Yeah. <laughs> what could yeah, when possibly put it all together go like wrong? That, Jesus. How could that possibly not lead to a better, peaceful, wonderful world that they all want? Right, right. There you go. There you go. We're not three laws away from perfection. Well, we are. We're th- those three laws. <laughs> We're three constitu- President for life, <laughs> unlimited money, and uh, what We're three one? constitutional amendments away from perfection. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Ah. <sighs> So yeah, I, I think radio I think about some fucking up. radio, man. With, yeah, with that burp right there. Yeah. Um. So I, I wanted to do um, a half book review. Okay, I'm gonna go answer <laughs> my email while you. Uh, I'm gonna steal some time from the fiends, man. Radio, Are radio, really? fucking radio. We, no, go ahead. We can't, we can't have we can't we can't have a dialogue. Well, maybe I've seen. It. What's the <laughs> book, man? What's the book? You haven't read it. I know you haven't. It's called it's called Iranian rappers and Persian porn. No, yeah. I've heard of it. It was given to you by. Uh, the sister that you had sex with when you were 12, right? 
No. For Christmas. <laughs> my, mo- my mother-in-law. Oh, um, okay. Although I saw a bumper mother- sticker. My- I saw a bumper sticker that said, save an elk, shoot a wolf. That would get you droned in California. <laughs> but in Wyoming, it's like, yeah, a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I kind of don't like the whole let's hate wolves mentality. I mean, because your dog property. looks like one. Yeah, and they're the same species like as dog. And you know, wolves, wolves are, are the cuddly, same man. species. I don't want it. I don't want. Yeah, I used to see bumper stickers that said "smoke a pack a day," and it had a crosshair with a pack of wolves in it. Uh, <laughs> whenever I lived in Wyoming, and they say I "shoot, thought, shovel, shut up." Yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, so if you do that, it's on your property. The wolves are uh, violating your property, eating your your cows, and you're a rancher. Yeah, that's fine. Kill them, whatever. Uh, but don't like make it an enjoyable thing. It, it's sad that politics pushes people to do that kind of glorification of acts like that. Because just because they want to, I guess, yell in the face of the slave master and say, "Well, oh it yeah, is. well, I love killing wolves, and I'm going to do it." It reminds yeah. me of those little kids on Murray, like, "Whatever, I have sex with all the men I want. I do what I want." <laughs> you don't know me. Yeah, yeah. I mean it. They're cuddly Yukon dogs. They're wolves. They just want, they just want to eat, man. If you gotta kill them, kill them, but don't like take some sick, sadistic pleasure in it. You know, because that leads to worm on worm on squirrel marriage. Worm on squirrel marriage, man. Yeah, and and worm bukake sessions. I think uh, that's gonna be the title of this cast. <laughs> worm on squirrel marriage. <laughs> What's next? Worm on squirrel marriage. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's slippery slope, Michael. You know how it goes. <laughs> All right. So um, before I was sidetracked into worm porn, I was talking about Persian porn and Iranian rappers. Uh, halfway through this book, it's by a guy named uh, Jamie Maslin, M-A-S-L-I-N, Muslin. I don't know. Muslim. Um, Muslin. Yeah. It's a Muslim. fabric. Like a cloth. Yeah. He, uh, he's yeah. a cool guy. He's, he's, a, he's a Brit. Uh, didn't really know anything about Iran. Um, decided he was going to hitchhike the Silk road and go all the way to china but uh didn't have the cash that's, for that that's not a euphemism <laughs> yeah hitchhiking the silk road baby <laughs> yeah that, that's that ordering that's ordering fun. a mail order tranny hooker with crocodile yeah, over the yeah. black net right the dark right. net that that's the post final special on uh on silk road <laughs> it's a tranny hooker uh naughty nursery kit and uh a huff bag full of jankum <laughs> so of john uh, Boehner's <laughs> jankum you bought on eBay. <laughs> no, but this dude meant like the actual road where silk used to be traded from the east to the west. Uh, so he was going to hitchhike all doesn't the way to China. Include, uh, that includes uh, AFPAC, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Nice, use it does. The, nice use of the new term, huh? AFPAC. 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 Nice. Nice. Uh, Morning Zoom wow. and, 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 and a duck reference. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> and an insurance reference. Right. Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes, man. Too I much got the government, government flu, man. <laughs> Creeping crud. See, see you, you muted the mic there for a little bit. That's kind of pro-ish. I, I did, yeah. yeah. We yeah. got them mixers made in China little, by slave labor. God bless America. 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 You don't Fuck. like America? Fuck yeah. it. <laughs> radio. <laughs> Fucking radio. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> man, you're hyper today. It's, it's you good. know kind of like being let out of a cage. I've been so I know. sick, man. Yeah, it's good yeah. to have you back, Michael. It's good to have Thanks. you back. Thanks. <laughs> Fuck fucking radio. Fucking radio. Fuck it, and it's worm ass. Fuck radio, and it's worm ass marriage and squirrels. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, guy wants to yeah. hike Silk Road. All right, I'm gonna. Answer, I'm gonna answer some emails. Go ahead. Here's Iran is cheap. Goes to Iran. And doesn't know what to expect. He's from Britain. All his friends are telling him that uh, he's going to get shot. He says the only thing he's ever seen, you know, or the the, the most, um, I guess, comprehensive view of Iran he's ever seen is a documentary where it shows a woman getting stoned to death for, I guess, being unfaithful. And it actually shows the stoning. Uh, and so he's got a very scary image in his head but he's got balls he's like whatever dude i'm gonna hitchhike to iran and and have a lot of fun and document it and write a book and that's what he did and he comes to find that it's uh it's not like the western media portrays it oh my god oh my god um and it's actually just you know it's 
it's really fun. It's a fun read. Uh, it's also pretty well researched, and you know, I am of Iranian heritage, so uh, there. But there are even lots of things that that I learned that I had no idea. Uh, so it gets it gets a little deeper than just scratching the surface, um, and it makes a lot of good anti-government points along the way. Um, because of course, what he finds out is that people in Iran are very nice, uh, and they all hate. <laughs> At least all the ones he meets anyway, I hate Khomeini. Um, everybody is forced to have a big Khomeini uh, portrait on their wall in all their businesses and such. And he says half of the hotel owners and business owners will point at it and then make like a thumb slit across their neck and, and like do a little spit and be like, oh my god, this Khomeini asshole. <laughs> so, um, and, and there's a few things that also illustrate this point a little bit further. Um, he is actually taken in by a hospitable couple who notices he's a foreigner and just wants to uh, be very generous to him. And so this is part of their exchange. I'll go ahead and read some of this. It's from, uh, it's from the book called Iranian Rappers and Persian Porn in the chapter titled German Pop Songs and Chains of Misery. All right, so I'll start now. They were both fascinated by my lifestyle and thought it very strange I had casually left a job to go traveling and just planned to find a new one when I returned. In Iran, you don't choose a job. Job chooses you, <laughs> said Sharam. Uh, so I thought that that was also a good fiend passage to say. Um, and the author goes on. He says, I had as many questions for them as they had for me and got them talking about what they thought of their government. Sharam summed it up nicely with, government bad, people good. Uh, like mine, I told him. I wondered what they would think of a dose of Bush and Blair style quote unquote liberation. Both were absolutely appalled by the suggestion and said the situation in Iraq was terrible. I agreed after we finished dinner, there was a knock on the door. Um, I guess the rest is kind of irrelevant. But that was the one of the quotes I wanted to share with you was uh, in Iran, job choose you. <laughs> and um, yeah. it's just a really great read. Um, I would highly encourage it to people. There's also, um, he's going through a shop and he buys some posters that he wants to send to his Westerner family, um, mostly because they're ironic. Like he buys some of the portraits of Khomeini and some other religious zealots. Uh, and he finds one poster he finds really interesting. It's of this big muscle bound dude who's like uh, hugging his mom, who's like old and wearing a chador and these big goofy glasses and, and being a man of the people. And it's kind of a montage of him doing all these very cliche things. And he thinks it's just hilarious because the guy's like wearing, you know, a wrestling leotard and he's all muscly and he's doing all these things um and apparently it was um a very famous guy in iran he learns about it later um and the guy's name is golem reza takiti he was an extremely popular national hero national hero who had a rags to riches life uh raised in poverty succeeded in becoming the first iranian wrestler to win a medal at an international tournament he went on to become an olympic champion and began to attain a legendary status he was seen by many Iranians as a sort of larger-than-life champion of good, a person Persians refer to affectionately as a Pahlavan. There's no direct English equivalent, but Pahlavan can roughly be described as an ethical, chivalrous, and heroic warrior fighting for good. Uh, many folklore stories tell of legendary Pahlavans who stood up to unfair rulers to defend righteousness despite the dangers to themselves. And this is what Takti did. So there's a word in Farsi that means uh, somebody who fights for morality and good in the face of an of unjust ruler. There's, I guess I guess an English equivalent would be freedom fighter or maybe freedom fiend. But I, I thought it awesome that there's that's a thing in Iran. It's somebody who's still seen as a champion of, of the people in the face of an evil ruler. Uh, in fact, uh, this guy, this wrestler, um, was a staunch supporter of the democratically elected Prime Minister Mossadegh, who was ousted by the CIA during the CIA's first coup. And it turns out, I guess he paid dearly for it. Like a few years later, after the Shah was installed by the CIA, um, the dude was found dead. Uh, quote unquote, it was suicide. You know, the government says it was suicide, but most people think the government assassinated their favorite sports hero and wrestler. So I guess it didn't pay off too well for him. I just thought it was really interesting that, uh, that there's a word for that and that's a concept. Um, and it made me feel kind of proud. Like maybe I should be a, 
a Palavan. Maybe we should call ourselves that. Or that's what yeah. we could call ourselves if we spoke Farsi. Huh? No. You can be that. No. You can, can be, be that. that, man. I'm Irish. I'm a drunken Irishman. You're just, Who doesn't just drink? A, you're an Irish soccer hooligan. <laughs> no, man. I don't, no. I don't like sports. No. I'm at <laughs> war with myself. I'm English and Irish, man. My, my brain is a battleground. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, was, also, I, was, I was out uh, in the yard doing squirrel things. What kind of squirrel things? <laughs> Trying to get them to marry, marry the worms so they won't be living in sin. <laughs> you're you're doing God's work, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you know the word assassin is also of uh, Hesh- Persian origin? Yeah, it means uh, yeah. it's the same root as hashish. Yes, and it's from a, a group called the Hashishiyun, and they had they have these castles near the Caspian Sea. Uh, I guess in English they call them the Castle of the Assassins, and it was this um, this cult from the 11th century, uh, ruled by a name uh, a, a dude named Hassan Saba. And their thing was they would recruit followers. They'd come to these beautiful mountain castles and then get them stoned out of their mind on hashish and then convince them to go kill political leaders. See, that doesn't usually work, does it? I mean, doesn't pot make you mellower? Yeah, I mean, in my experience, you get stoned and you don't want to do things like like going out and assassinating somebody. That's got to be work, right? I mean, yeah. Like that. Do you know where the word <laughs> I, thug comes from? I guess back from? then there, there weren't Cheetos in video games. So. Yeah. <laughs> there were swords and oppressors. Swords. I just Back sent you a link of uh, where the word thug comes from. That's a good etymology to discuss. Ah, Not thug. to be confused with entomology, which is the study of worms. Yes, among entomology other of, and of worms. Nematodes. I thought it was study of, of bugs. Is it I'm study suffering of worms? from nematosis. Oh, there you go. Thug comes from thuggy, also known as thuggy or simply thugs, were organized gangs of professional assassins who traveled in groups across India for several hundred years. Oh, I like wow. this picture from 1864. A group of thugs. It looks pretty unthuggish to me, but <laughs> they, they are right, wearing they baggy look- clothes, though, and, and things on their heads. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they look like uh, religious leaders, not thugs. Well, I guess I repeat They look like snake charmers, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess that's what they look like. All right. Um, huh. So I didn't know that. Thug is of Indian origin for dudes who were assassins in India. Yeah. So that's that's what Tupac was into then, huh? <laughs> he was thugging. Thug, thug life. I'm well, thugging. you know, the, the they may be snake charmers because remember that snake charmer who was banned from from banned from charming snakes in India, oh, and yeah. he released his oh, yeah. venomous <laughs> snakes into some government building. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was one of the best Freedom Fiends things we've ever brought to people's attention. <laughs> yes. The story of Thuggy was popularized by books such as Philip, Philip Morris Taylor's novel, Confessions of a Thug, 1839, leading oh, to wow. the word thug entering the English language. I like the word thug. <laughs> thug. Yeah. Thug. Yeah, it's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Assassin sounds really kind of fruity compared to thug. Thug sounds like what it is. It's someone who would like hit you over the head with a with a brick. Assassin's kind of sophisticated though, isn't it? It's kind of sinister. Well, I think it is a little more sophisticated than thug. Yeah. 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 I I guess it's just uh how it's what it depends on your budget. (laughs) Thugs would join travelers and gain their confidence and then surprise and strangle their victims by tossing a thank a handkerchief or a noose around their necks. The uh, killings were performed in the honor of the goddess Kali and were very ritualistic. Uh Then they would rob their victims of valuables and bury their bodies. Thugs. Yeah. Yikes. You and the modern about, um, version is just hitting someone over the head with a brick and taking their dope mm, on the street. Yes, yes. Which is why we should all have AR-15 strapped to our backs. Constantly. <laughs> Although Constantly. I don't have any guns because I lost them in a voting accident. Yeah, yeah. You and me both, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about uh, FEMA guillotines or guillotines yeah. on a, a few episodes ago. We. And, uh, we were, yeah. yeah. We. But you, br- we. you brought it up, and I, I, I was going to bring something else that was similar, but I, I guess we got on some other subject. But uh, I was watching a thing about these um, 
they were sort of mobile guillotines. They were like these circles. Ideally, you could throw them over somebody's head. They would, of course, stop at the shoulders, so their head would be in the circle. And then you could pull a chain, and it would uh, trigger blades that could cut your head off. Um, and I think they used something similar to That's that. That's racist. That in that Boondocks episode, you know, where it's the three friends of Stink Meaner, and there's that showdown at the end where they fight Bushido Brown, and he's got that thing on the chain that's the circle with the blades, and he's trying to chop off Bushido Brown's head, and he does at the end. Well, that's the I Flying think, Guillotine, which is a myth that guillotine. came from that's a what, movie right. called The Flying Guillotine, which was right. debunked on uh, Mythbusters. It was debunked as in it wouldn't really it was work. Bunked. No, it was actually bunked to where it could work. Well, oh, you know, it? you you search FEMA guillotines on uh on on Google Images and you get some pretty brutal stuff. Let's see, Christian beheadings, uh, and there's pictures of them. Let's see, got some Freemasons here, got some Bearcats, got Obama speaking, got a FEMA guy hugging a woman inappropriately. Wow, man, it's weird now that um. Now that uh, Google Images like is automatically safe search, it ain't safe from violence. It's there's no sex in your results, but it's all violence. Interesting. <laughs> that's status, man. Yeah, that's status. Um, yeah. Hmm, hmm. I always thought that the flying guillotine, though, uh, it, did they bunk it? They they thought it worked, but I thought that uh, it wasn't really practical. But it was just used as a fear instrument to scare people into obeying the the state since the state had these flying guillotines sort of like the drone of ancient asia you know something that would literally fly through the air and then kill you yeah yes um i don't know there's not a whole lot on the wiki page for it so i don't know i guess i should have researched it before i opened my big mouth but yeah. Just something I thought of when you were talking about FEMA guillotines. I guess, I guess that concept is similar, right? Something that will chop off your head so you should be scared of the people who wield such a thing. The institution yeah. that wields such a thing. Uh, even that imagery is in 1984, right? Like, uh, here comes a candle to light you to bed. Here comes a chopper to chop off your head. Well, it's... Uh, and we do have to go sell some FEMA guillotines here in a second. But, um, you know, it's kind of a... a it was you guillotines were used in the third reich specifically on dissidents political dissidents people who mm -hmm. decried the nazis um it's a very think about what kind of death it is it's removing the head from the body it's removing right. the poison ideas from yes. the ability to do anything with them so it's, exactly. a, it's particularly uh tyrannical and anti-thought kind of like thought police thought executioner kind of thing so let's right, go sell right. some fema guillotines well, before, we'll you, be before we do that in eye on me i say i quote pimp c who says fucking radio they can take my they can take <laughs> my body they can lock my body but they can never take up take my mind but and that's can, what that's what the guillotine does they can remove takes your, your mind. mind from yeah. your body yeah mm. that's what i was saying thank you for that i know i just, I just wanted to say that Want to say that Pimp C? You just wanted to quote Pimp C. Yeah, you got a problem with that? Fucking no. Radio, man. <laughs> fucking radio. Fiend's gonna be on fucking radio. All right, we'll get it out of our system by next month. All right, here we go. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons. <laughs> Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. 
HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% .9 for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Yeah, uh, for, for the rest of this year, uh, Neem's going to read some more glossary. We ended at Mosin. I'll, I'll comment, but I'm going to let him do it because my voice is still recovering from the government creeping crud that was uh, injected mm. into my chicken McNuggets or something. <laughs> so you shouldn't eat those anyway. Or did you use them for your cheat day? No, nah, I put them up my butt, man, because we're on radio. Oh, right. We're on radio. <laughs> if we're on radio, you put them up your ass. Ah. You, you fucking prick. Fucking ass. All right. So um, last time we uh, read Glossary, we left at Mosin. For those that are new listeners, uh, we've been doing a thing lately where we read uh, bits of the Glossary as a segment. Uh, we have a very extensive Freedom Fiends Glossary on our website, for the future, freedomfiends.com. Uh, yeah, and so we figured during the cast we'd do a little Rosetta Stone here. In it's case, for the archaeologists uh, and uh, anthropologists right. who are going to who, who dig come us across up. the hard drive full of or the server full of Freedom Fiends torrents. Um, but they might not. It's not. It might not be on the web anymore. So yeah. We, we need to it's going to be on the radio. Well, you know, when you broadcast something on radio, it does end up in outer space. So it could be other uh, worlds hearing us. There you go. That's there you one go. of the themes of uh, of um, The Man Who Fell to Earth, the David Bowie sci-fi movie that's really yeah. horrible and shows why he shouldn't quit his day job singing. Yeah. Um, it's a theme in lots of sci-fi and even joke sci-fi. Like uh, There's that Futurama episode where the Omicron Percy I-8 people have been watching uh, – uh, yeah. Single female lawyer. Single female lawyer. Yeah. And they, and Which they is an Alan McBeal uh, Yeah. Thing. And they force them to reenact it or write new episodes and act them out. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so. But, you know, the fiends will be intergalactic if any AM stations pick us up. FM doesn't really get out of the uh, stratosphere, but AM does. AM actually uh, ends up on other oh. planets. So, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Fucking A, man. Fucking radio. Can't wait to fucking be on radio. Fuck yeah. Shit, goddamn. Yeah, let me pull up uh, the seven words you can't say on television. Let's play that, and then read and then read them. Yeah. Although I thought after uh, what's his face, you can now. Uh, you can say them on. Well, it's kind of his shtick. Hey, but your yeah, uh, thought, gun for everyone video has five thousand views now. Yay! Yeah, yeah. A gun for five thousand people apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah, see. Seven words everyone. you can't say on television. George Carlin. Here we go. Now child friendly. What's that? That can't be. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, while you look that up, I'll go ahead and continue on the the glossary spiel. So uh, we're gonna get important. to the glossary. I love, as I nope. say, they're my uh, work, they're my play, they're my passion. Words are all we have, really. Uh, we have thoughts, but thoughts are fluid. You know. Vision. What a ratio that is. Birds. Bad thoughts. And winning the war. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. Wow. And or shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. Wow. <laughs> there, got it. All right, nice, good job. Shit, fuck. What is it? Shit, piss, fuck. Shit, shit, piss, cocksucker, motherfucker, something, something, and tits. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that should be the name of this episode. Hmm. Yeah. With the something, something, or with the actual words that I missed. Uh, the actual words. Let's see. The words. Okay. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Shit, piss, fuck, cock. It's kind of a tongue twister, you man. Sir, you need to make a I rap. I know George Carlin. <laughs> I am no George Carlin. Yeah, I am not. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, motherfucker, cocksucker, tits. Tits? Yeah. Tits? Really? Can't, yeah. Couldn't say tits? Yeah, he says tits shouldn't be on the list because it sounds like the nickname of a snack. New Nabisco tits. Corn tits. <laughs> cheese tits. <laughs> Yeah. I'd eat some cheese tits. I'd cheese also tits. eat milk chocolate tits. <laughs> All Shit, right. piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. tits. I could do it. Here, let me uh, let me send it to you. I was gonna say, let me PayPal it to you. Let me PayPal, PayPal. it to you. PayPal right. me those tits. I just sent like it to you. I, I just see, like if you see, see if you can there's, wrap it pretty quick. Here. Hold on, hold on. There's a there's a link to each one. How did you do that? 
Oh, I don't there's, know. There's a wiki page for this? Yes. yes, there's a w- wiki page for each of those. <laughs> I did some studio magic here did in our Gumbo radio. Did do that on purpose? Oh, you copy and pasted it from some... From okay, got Wikipedia. It, got it. Okay. Wikipedia. Shit, piss, fuck, cuck, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Ah, no, no, gotta do one. Better than mine. All right. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Yeah. All right. Now you All can right. do our glossary. All right. Which Any law that doesn't... Not as interesting. What? Uh, what's the um, entry? What it's, are we uh, are you saying our glossary is not as interesting <coughs> as shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, <coughs> motherfucker, or tits? Seven well, words you can't say on the fiends. Well, it's probably more interesting than you hawking a loogie. Okay. So, good nanny radio. law. It's good radio, man. <laughs> Nanny law is any law that doesn't protect anyone from anything and only oppresses people. Examples include drug laws, anti-gay marriage laws, gun magazine round limits, seatbelt and helmet laws, raw milk confiscations, the Gibson guitar confiscations, and overt regulation of any kind. Shit, Nima's hip hop stage name. No, no, Nima V. That's uh, Nima's hip hop stage name. Oh, you guys already knew that. It stands for Nima Vagina. On radio. Yes, Nima Vagina. Yes, yes. Nima Cunt. Nima C. Nima Cunt. In the house. All right. Ugh. Neocon. Neocon is a neoconservative. It's a Republican who claims to be for small government but wants to increase the size of government because their penis is small. Yeah. Um, for, no, it's, it's they want to increase the size of government for the things that they think they need. Also, the Republican citizens who support such a candidate and believe their bull plop. A neocon is bull basically... Plop. A, Bull plop. You wrote That's it. That's almost worse than bullshit somehow. Bull plop. It's plop. an onomatopoeia, man. Pia. It's an onomatopoeia. Pee pee kitty. It's because. Pee pee kitty. Pee pee kitty. Piss piss kitty. Pee pee kitty. Piss cat. Episcopalian. Cut. All right. A neocon is basically a Democrat who hates pot and gay marriage and loves killing brown people. See also Christian Sharian, Rancher Slater, Republicron, Square, and Statist. Uh, we, should, we should add boring to that, but uh, remove Christian Boring's Shireen. in there. Go go back up and read boring. It's up I know boring's now. in there, but it's No, not. but I added boring. It's an entry now, I think. Look for boring. I know. I know. Scroll I'm up just to the top. It should be well, we have top. to add boring if we added boring. So read boring because you know, this has to be inclusive for the people digging through the poo to look for uh, things to burn to keep okay. warm in the future. Okay. Boring, a synonym for square. Boring is something the fiends call statists. Thank you. I work on this hard, man. I want it all. On the, <laughs> I want it all on the congressional fiends record for yeah. John Boehner to bolt yeah. plop on. Yeah, let's make sure it's all in there, Michael. Yeah. All right, all right. But uh, also, we retired Christian Sharia, so that's also on the neocon entry. But to not insult people who believe in Sharia. But I guess well you could as, as well as Christians. <laughs> It says C also, and we still have Christian Sharian on the list. We just have a caveat that it is retired. Yes. All right. So next up on the Freedom Fiends Cunt. glossary. Cunt. No, next up is not Cunt. Cunt. We're, at, we're at ends. Learn your alphabet. All I'm right. calling Christian Sharian's cunts for, ra- <laughs> for radio. <laughs> radio. <laughs> they are alumni of the Christian University of North Texas. Who? Right. The cunts? Cunts. The yeah. fighting cunts? You got it. <laughs> the drunken cunts. All right. No homo. <laughs> that's that's next up. No homo is very outdated. I don't know if it's that outdated, but... We're bringing it a, back, man. Just yeah, like square. Exactly. exactly. Uh, it's a, well, it's a hip-hop term Michael and Nima use as a joke. Uh, it's used after you say something that could be construed as gay, like, I love you, my brother, to indicate that Fag. it is not a gay thing. No homo. Michael and Nima have okay, no problem with... Okay, you didn't say with... no homo. So. Oh, yeah, you're right. You got me Cunt. there. Yeah. Mm, mother, may I? No Delicious homo. Nabisco cunts. All right. Michael and Nima have no problem with the gays, but are straight... The gays. Like, y- yeah, you did like a little apostrophe. There. The, the gays. gays. Uh, but we are straight. All right. Most of the time. Uh, I mean, you know, it depends on what drugs I got. Yeah, but you Back don't do drugs day. anymore. So, yeah, yeah, but, you know... If you yeah, did. I mean, a lot of our listeners in Radio Land in the flyover states, you know, those states that don't matter, like where yeah. I live and you live, um, uh-huh. you know, a lot of people would say if you if you if you done it gay, you're gay or you're bi. Yeah. You just know? just that one time. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of like well, I don't know. I don't agree with that because it's like you know, I experimented in college. I voted. I voted Democrat. You know. So so if you popped a Molly, you just like spread your legs and take all comers. I don't know. Unintended. What's a Molly? (laughs) Ecstasy. 
Oh, a Molly. I thought it was something like a you know Cincinnati trombone. <laughs> Cleveland steamer. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Okay. So uh, next up on the list, non-aggression principle, which being gay doesn't violate, so it's not immoral. Uh, non-aggression principle, or NAP. It's also called the zero aggression principle, or take ZAP. Take a nap. Yeah, we're yeah, always taking a nap, a nap or, or, or a zap. Or, or take a zap. As in zap that aggression in the bed. Um, that's the basis of libertarianism, man. It's also the basis of voluntarism and true anarchism. And it's the only ethical way to live. Living by the non-aggression principle means you live your life in a way that does not coerce, steal from, or harm anyone. Many people participate in coercion, even if not by their own hand. But by voting for, quote-unquote, representatives and cops to do it for them. And perpetuating that system through horizontal enforcement. That word... The, sen the sentence where you said steal got crunched. Read that sentence again. Yes. Okay. Um, it, it got crunched by the internet gnomes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll read that again. Living by the non-aggression principle means you live your life in a way that does not coerce, steal from, or harm anyone. Thank you. Because, you know, the regional supervisor, I mean, the regional scrutinizer got involved ah. there and hit the, yeah. hit the, it's not the curse button. It's just the <laughs> button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the oh they might be saying something the relevant. Obfuscate, but only happens a few times. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's it's important though. You say many people participate in coercion, even if not by their own hand, but by voting for representatives and cops to do it for them. And this is really important right here. And perpetuating that system through horizontal enforcement, because people do do that. They do that all the time, and that's people where do our do. real target is. People, people do, do do that. People yes, do do shit that. Mm -hmm. People do do. Bull plop. People are people. Mm. Self defense, mm. even including violence, to stop someone from initiating aggression on you or others is not a violation of the non aggression principle. Uh, and why is that? Because it's thou shalt not initiate aggression. Right? And you know, people that criticize libertarianism really take exception to that. I mean, people who like want the government to kill people they don't like really take a, when they try to like uh, write an essay about their complaints about libertarianism. They're like, well, they say as long as it's not initiating it, as someone else started it, but they can always say that someone else started it because someone is always starting it in their mind. You know, mm. eh, just leave us the fuck alone. Put us on radio and leave us the fuck alone, world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave us alone and listen to us at the same time. Yes. Okay, so next up on the list, Obama Humper or Obama Liquor. It's exactly the same as Lincoln Liquor, but about Obama, uh, including the fact that Obama has violated the Constitution, suspended habeas corpus, declared martial law, laughed at the fact that he's broken campaign promises, renewed the Patriot Act, suspended the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 10th Amendments, has gone to war on brown people in the Middle East, bypassed Congress to do Fuck so, and has branded nonviolent Americans as a threat. Obama Fuck has gone far further than any American president by openly and proudly killing an American so citizen really without a trial more. using That's a flying robot. Heidi Fleiss was charging me. So fuck you very much, the FCC. Sorry. Go ahead. Radio. Should I read that over again? No, I think that uh, future um, software will be able to sort that out. <laughs> just just use, use Fuck the FCC by Eric Idle as okay. the comparison yeah. to use as a right. filter. There you go. All right. That's good that you helped them decode that. Uh, we'll just take the yes. Adam Kokesh line on that and not do anything about it because uh, technology will sort it out one day. I like this comment. But on a serious note, guys, the First Amendment truly is getting raped, and to add insult to injury, our government is going to shit on it right after. <laughs> fiends on the radio, man. We're going to end up in the fiends at camps. Yeah. For being on I, radio. Think they, I, I think they use it regularly as toilet paper. I don't know about shitting on it. I mean, it's already covered in shit. If one of us ends up in the FEMA camp, the other has to keep doing the show and like try to get us on from the FEMA camp. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. It'd be like yeah. uh, live from Folsom Prison, but it's live <laughs> from the FEMA camp. Yeah. Yeah, I could dig that. I like that album, Live from Folsom Prison. Although it's yeah, faked. It's a fake studio album. Most studio albums are. I mean, most live that's what are. That's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering because it didn't seem like it made any sense that they would let 
prisoners have that. Well, they did. They actually did. Johnny Cash did play in prisons, but uh, that actual recording, you know, it's hard to get a good live recording. The uh, the first Jane's Addiction record on Triple X Records that, you know, kind of broke them out. It was supposed mm-hmm. to be a live record. It was like, it was a live record, uh, but the band was so drunk, everything sucked except the drums because the drum was drummer is a real pro. So they like ended up overdubbing most of it. And then the audience sounds are like from a bullfight in, in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> nice i didn't know that all right all right uh I know that so we, we do- had the same manager and uh he was in the studio when they were doing it nice nice did, did he tell you that that's what they were doing uh like well years later live, he so. told me that's what they did uh, yeah ah got it yeah okay okay ah sorry you all right that's all, all right. right i'm just kicking shit over in my cell you bastard okay so uh up next on the list is open carry that's uh openly carrying a pistol on your hip in a holster in plain view. It's legal in many states, including Wyoming, though people are still hassled for it in some places, but not Wyoming. Not Wyoming. Uh, Michael used to open carry a lot. Nima open carried while he lived in Wyoming. Both of them usually carry concealed now, but Michael still openly carries once in a blue moon. Just to remind himself he can. Nima actually no longer... I haven't. Uh, in, in, you haven't? I mean, I wrote that. Last time I wrote that, it was probably six months, and it right. was probably six months ago. I right. haven't. I don't see any point in open carrying, man. I don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I live in Texas now, so I can't couldn't even if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think in a free society, uh, I think people in would our society, I don't see the point of it, and I don't have any right. guns anymore. I mean, I lost them in a voting accident. In a voting so, accident. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I probably wouldn't anymore. It's just so much easier to conceal carry, and uh, I don't know. I. People also make the argument that it's safer because uh, if you're an unknown factor, if you're if you're uh, you're you the know, first armed- guy that you'll get shot in the bank robbery if you have the gun, yeah, right. right. I mean, you know, in a bank robbery, they shoot the guards, right? Because the guards are armed mm-hmm. and they can see mm-hmm. them. So yeah, you're they you're you're, you. an, you're an obvious threat. Whereas if you're if they don't know if you're armed or not, you know, it could go either way. So they'll avoid that kind of a thing. All right, so panarchist it's someone who believes everyone should be free to voluntarily pick or reject any amount of quote-unquote government services i think services should be in quote-unquote too yeah uh and only pay for the services they use panarchy also emphasizes removing geographical location from these choices uh michael and nima are panarchists um so yeah i guess put simply if if you really love the state um and you wanted to have your own mini state that didn't affect me and everybody voluntarily agreed to and you had a little chunk of land to do it on, I wouldn't feel hurt by that or that you were doing anything wrong as long as it was consensual and people could opt out and you didn't bug me. Yeah. L-B-G-T-P. Panarchist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, what you do on your own property is none of my business. Just don't ask me to pay for it. Hmm. Okay. What? Hmm. Hmm. Somebody said that Parrot uh, phrasing. an email I sent them triggered the fraud alarm in Microsoft Outlook. That's weird. Hmm. I'm not a fraud. I think it's because it it was the the subject line was something about the federal government. You know, I think that they uh-huh. they uh, Microsoft automatically says that you're being fraudulent if you have the word federal government in the subject line because people probably do <laughs> fraud. Well, people probably do fraud. People from the federal government are frauds. Yeah, but you know, because people <laughs> say like the federal government wants to send you ten million dollars. You know, right, right, right. Uh, but then again, all those like Dick Army Freedom Works things always say the federal government's trying to do this. Stop them now. I don't have Outlook, man. I don't use Microsoft yeah. products on my Microsoft uh, computer. I don't either, man. Uh, although I, I guess them. I use G- Gmail, which isn't looking like it's be- going to be much better. In, you know, Gmail, government you know, mail, yeah, gov- government mail, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, parrot phrasing, parrot phrasing, man. That's uh, that's Michael's term for a particular type of paraphrasing, the kind that gets you ahead in public school, some jobs, politics, and the UN. It's where you take the stupid concepts of your authority figure, then say the same thing more eloquently in your own words. Authority figures think you're brilliant and you advance in your particular system. I think that's a good place to end, unless you got a follow up. No, I was gonna uh, try to paraphrase that as a funny. Oh, go example, ahead, go ahead. That's a good no. example. No. No, I'm not we got time. It. If you want to no, be brilliant, no, I don't want to. All right, I'm I will uh, mark that we I'm, ended at paraphrasing. I'm withholding. 
<laughs> I'm withholding. <laughs> me. me. <laughs> Open your legs to my mind, Nima. Yes. All right. Will. Well, we're going to be on the fucking radio. Yeah. Yep. Fucking A, man. Shit. F- fucking shit, piss cunt, cocksucker. Thug cunt. Thug cunt assassin. All right. The cunt right. assassinator. That's going to be my new rap name. There was a band called Anal Cunt. Anal Cunt? Ah. Yeah, that's pretty offensive. I feel like you should to choose one or the people. other. <laughs> that's Can't. a you're not going to be on the radio ever kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, they would just they would just abbreviate it. They'd be AC. It was. It was AC. So oh. abbreviate it. Cool. All right. Say worms. Right. Worms. Worms and squirrel marriage forever. L B G T P W S. C. Panarchy squirrel worm cunt. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. On and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many liberty people as you can especially to those who don't yet get it you rock hello freedom fiends it's your boy me from the u.s get the u.s out of the screen i owe me and that includes endorphins no one won't ask permission and i won't say please freedom fans for fact that i gotta make clear the freedom fiends podcast is covered by a creative commons attribution share alike 3.0 license do what you want with it and spread it around Tell two friends. Make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation. Three times a week, Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati share their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember, the only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.